So for number 13, they want us to take the area bounded between these two curves and um, revolve it about the x-axis like so. So I've gone ahead and I've drawn these two curves. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to find where they intersect, right? Because we're going to be, uh, we need to know where are the boundaries. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set these curves equal to each other. Um, so we have that 2 is equal to, um, actually I'm going to do it the other way. Right. We have that 1 plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 2. So I'm going to bring the 2 over to the left side. Um, and so we have that y minus 2 squared plus 1 minus 2 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to FOIL out and expand the first term. So I have that um, y squared minus 4y plus 4 plus 1 minus 2 is equal to um, is equal to 0. So y squared minus 4y and then 4 plus 1 minus 2 gives us um, plus 3 is equal to 0. Now I have to factor it. And this factors nicely into y minus, let's see, uh, y minus 3 times y minus 1 times y minus 1. Therefore, y is equal to 1 and to 3. So these two points here are at uh, 1 and 3 on my y-axis. So now that I have these boundaries, um, let's think about what happens when we revolve this area about the y-axis. So, um, it's like I take this little chunk here that is 3, the, where it touches from the curve x is equal to 2 all the way out to the pink curve, and I'm going to revolve it about the x-axis. So, when I revolve it, it's going to give me a cylinder like this. Um, and now I'm going to think about unwrapping the cylinder, and think of it like a, an infinitely thin sheet of paper that got wrapped around the x-axis, right? Um, and so this is going to have an area... And basically what is going to happen here, uh, let me do that in a different color, I'm going to do that in black, is that as I move across the, the y-axis, I'm going to have these little different chunks that get revolved into different sized cylinders, right? And so when I sum up all these cylinders, it's going to give me a volume. Therefore, the volume is going to be the sum from 1 to 3, from 1 to 3, of all the areas of these cylinders of a, y, d, y. And um, I'm putting d, y because I'm summing them up vertically, right, from one to three. And also a, y, because these areas are definitely functions of y. Um, as you can see, as we move on, uh, as we go up the y axis, the cylinders definitely change, right? So they change as a function of y, and we need to be able to express that. Um, so if we take and maybe I'm going to erase this little black cylinder. Oops, that was not a good idea. So let's just leave it like this. All right, um, so let's think about how we're going to calculate this area as a function of y, because if I have an expression for it, then I can sum it up in my integral. Um, and so the first thing that we're gonna look at is this height here. And this height is basically just going to be the circumference here of my circle, right? Uh, that is going to be like the base of my cylinder that when it gets cut open, it gives me a height and any circle the circumference is given by 2 pi r So this is 2 pi and I just have to think about how to express r as a function of y and That's pretty easy because the radius here is just um, It's my height on the y-axis, right? Like wherever I'm at on my y-axis That is going to give me my radius as you can see here. It goes like from the center all the way out to some um, some value of y. So that one is pretty easy. It's just 2 pi y. And now we have to think about um, now we have to think about this length over here. And let's think about what this is. Well, this length um, and this is all getting pretty messy. So maybe I'm going to erase some of this and redraw my my graph. Okay. Um, so it went like this. That's my y-axis, and then my pink curve, it went from here, touched it at 1, and touched it at, at 3, okay. And that is my area. All right, so let's think about what this orange base is here. Well, the orange base is just where it touches 
here, right? It's the, the difference between these two, uh, the curve X is equal to two and the pink curve, because that is going to get revolved like so. So let's think about how we're going to get that height. Well, that little orange section is basically the this length here, x is equal to 2, right, minus this length here. So if I go this big length minus this small length, we can see that we're going to be left with this little chunk here in blue, which is that part. Um, and the reason that we're doing 2 minus the pink curve is because we measure the, the height of the pink curve from the bottom, right? So we measure it going from 0 all the way out to here. Um, so we have that this orange part is basically 2 minus that pink curve, so minus 1 plus y minus 2 squared. Um, so we're going to expand this so that gives us 2 minus 1 plus y squared minus 4y plus 4. And so this gives us 2 minus 1 minus y squared minus minus gives us plus 4y and then minus 4. So in total we have minus y squared plus 4y and then minus 4 minus 1 plus 2 gives us uh, minus 3. Yeah, that is correct. Let me see if I get it, got everything right. I did. So therefore, my area here is base times height. The base is 2 pi y, which is equal to 2 pi y times the height, which is this guy, times minus y squared plus 4y minus 3. Um, and so once we have this, let me just distribute that y and leave out the 2 pi because it's a constant so that it's easy for us to integrate. So that's minus y cubed plus 4y squared minus 3. All right, so once I have this, I have an expression for my area, right? So once I have an expression for my area, I can now put it inside the integral. Therefore, the volume is going to be the integral from 1 to 3 of ay, and ay is this guy right here. So 2 pi goes outside, and that gives us uh, minus y cubed plus 4y squared uh, minus 3 and all of this times um, times dy. So let me double check my my work. Let me see if that is right. Um, that is that is right indeed. So once I integrate it, um, I'm going to get here, let's see, 2 pi times minus y to the power of 4 over 4 plus 4y cubed over 3 um, minus Let's see, I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, oh yeah, when I distributed this y, I didn't multiply it by the 3. So actually this should have been minus 3y, right? So minus 3y, yeah. So minus 3y squared over 2. Um, and all of this evaluated from 1 to 3. So now I'm just going to plug in my boundaries. This gives me 2 pi times, let's see, minus y cubed to the power 4 over 4. This gives us minus... 81 to the power 4, because I'm applying 3, right? Plus, um, excuse me, 4 times uh, 3 to the power of 3 over 3, so that is 103 over 3, minus 3 times y squared over 2, so that's 3 times um, 9 over 2, so 27 over 2, and then minus the, the lower part evaluated at 1, right? So minus, uh, minus, minus 1 fourth, so plus 1 fourth, and then uh, minus 4 thirds, and then minus minus, so plus 3 halves. And so when I simplify this, this gives us 2 pi times, let's see, when I put this in my calculator, uh, I get 8 thirds. Therefore, the answer is 16 pi over 3. So let me um, zoom out so you guys can see. And yeah, that's what I get when I take this area and I revolve it about the x-axis.